Mar knows a lot about technology. I see. And a lot about you know the way people, you know, these days deal with technology and how, I see. how it's changing their lives and you know, but well, it is. on a personal level. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that's why your work speaks to a lot of people there. In fact, I was reading the Hunger Dogs last night, <laughs> and I was really um, sort of blown away. I mean, you were really in that book the way you were dealing with the issues that you were taking some of the issues you dealt with earlier. Yes. And then sort of saying, well, what's happening now? What's changed now? Well, uh, what's changed now is is not exactly well. It, storytelling has changed. Mm-hmm. Like you so you so you talk about technology. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we don't write on pads anymore. No. Right. We write on computers. Right. 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 We write on word processors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, and uh, uh, naturally. Our language may be crisper, mm-hmm. see, uh, and uh, maybe a little more urgent, mm. <laughs> see. Maybe we're just not as leisurely as we used to be. You think you've noticed a change in the way that people... No, it's not a great change. Yeah. People remain people all through. True. <laughs> through all, all kinds of uh, uh, technologies. Mm. Sure, we had it. We had technology too. We called them pencils. <laughs> <laughs> but what would and, I? And uh, uh, we tried for effects, even with pencils. We mm-hmm. tried for uh, different types of effects. Uh, we tried for half tones. Right, right. We did. We have Ben Day. Sure. Right. Yeah, Sir Prince. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Ben Day, if you wanted a half tone. Uh, it was just a series of dots, yeah. really. Right. If you analyze it, put it under a microscope, and you got these dots spread all the way out. Sure. Put them together, and you you uh, uh, you, you get a you get a nice half tone. In other right. words, it isn't black, it isn't white. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, it it'll look great on pants. <laughs> 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 so. Uh, Yes, I, I believe we, we had our own technology in those days, mm-hmm. but it was a simple technology. Right. I, mean, cause it was, I mean, like, for instance, um, I'm trying to think what the micro mark that you were talking about in the Hunger Dogs book. What's that? In, in the, I don't know, that, that uh, Darcy had come with this new technology and it was going to change everything. Yes, I, I, I always tried to stay about 30 years ahead. <laughs> yeah. I always tried to stay about 30 years ahead. Uh, during my stories, yeah. right. uh, in other words, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write a story about uh, things people already knew. Right. I mean, well, yeah. I was reading, you know, what I came across that blew my mind was in Omac, one of the old yes. Omac comics. Yes. He's got these goggles on. Yes. And he's going into this movie, and you know, in his dreams, and that's predicting something that they're coming along with the virtual reality. Well, now. of course. Yeah. Of course. But, you know, uh, it, it's something that was. Uh, it, it's something which, at that period, could have been ridiculed. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's a, uh, uh, you know, those things are never going to happen. <laughs> See? And, and here we are. And here we are. Yeah. And, and the technology is so simple to us that we, you know, we readily accept it yeah. as part of our lives. Mm-hmm. That's right. Street, what they call street And uh, yeah, I can't use it as well as you, but uh, it's your generation that's grown up with it. Yeah. So, so uh, it, it lives with you fellows, and it's as natural as anything. Mm-hmm. Right, like video games or whatever. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I envy you in a way because uh, you can you can live a lot more easily in a contemporary world mm-hmm. than I do. But, so, this, yeah. but now, with that, I mean, there's a lot of issues that you brought up, even you know, through all the work that you did. Yes. Um, where that makes sometimes it makes your life more difficult. Well, of course it would. You know. Of course it would, because. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't accept what you're doing. Mm-hmm. See, they say, uh, "Well, you must be a daydreamer." See? Mm-hmm. And uh, they say, "Give us facts." <laughs> see, mm-hmm. and of course the facts would be very simple for that particular day. Right. See, but somehow they accepted mine. <laughs> they accepted yeah. mine because I I took those uh, fantastic facts and put them in a good story. Sorry. Right. See, and at the story sold magazines. I was doing my job. Mm-hmm. Right. My like, job was to sell magazines. Mm-hmm. Did you did you think um, when you were doing those that you were affecting? I mean, what when you were affect, how you were affecting your audience? What was what somebody was going to oh, think yes, about when I, reading them? I, I you know uh, I I felt that uh, uh, the audience 
Well, we feel the same astonishment that I did. Mm -hmm. right. See, astonishment that uh, these particular developments. See, now in my day, uh, subway was a big thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, today, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, modes of transportation that outstrip the, you know, the common subway. Sure. Right. If we want to, we want to travel. We can look forward to uh, uh, techno tubes. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. right. and uh, things like that, right. and uh, we can look forward to saying crossing New York and say in 45 minutes yeah. right. when right. it takes us two hours or something. Yeah, now, right? yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. So that's what you were. So you always thought you you were just looking ahead over the horizon and yes. just pulling that. Yes, I uh, I always drew a story 30 years ahead. Yeah. Or what I considered sure. 30 years ahead. Right. So, so um, okay. So. Well, what I, well, let me see if I can explain this. So then somehow you mix that in with mythology, though, as well. Oh, yes, I did. I brought mythology into modern times. I, I brought in uh, Hercules. Right. Uh, I brought in uh, uh, Samson. Yeah, and then the New Gods, which I thought was an amazing, where you said, okay, well, the New Gods was a 30 years ahead thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the New Gods was, what was that mythology all about? There's got to be a new mythology. Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. That's and, uh, exciting. I mean, reading it now, even now, it just was really exciting. Yes, for me. and I was creating a mythology for the forties. See, uh -huh. which the forties didn't have. Right. Uh -huh. well, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. And uh, <laughs> the, and uh, uh, not only that, uh, but it, it was acceptable in the fact that it was a battle between father and son. Right. Right. See, it wasn't. That's a very classic. Uh, well, it is classic. Yeah. I mean, it's a very classic. Show me the son that doesn't defy the father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and then the switch, and then you switch them so that the that they have this urge oh, yes. from the other son. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're always afraid. Father, both father and son, will not accept the final confrontation. Hmm. A son in the end will never hurt his father. Mm. That's my personal belief. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And a father will never hurt his son. I know that I never will. Right. And my son can do anything to me that he damn pleases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just the way I feel. I, I can't hurt my own flesh and blood. Mm. And I feel that uh, even villains go uh, totally with problems totally beset by problems which they have to contend with, uh, their own character mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the things that they're, uh, and uh, the things that they, they, that spring from their character, see, yeah. their issues with other people, right. Right, right. see, they have to contend with that, but they do it in a totally human way. Yeah. Like I, I, I was talking earlier with some people about Dr. Doom. Mm -hmm. Dr. Doom is, a, is an evil person, mm. but he, he not always been evil. Dr. Doom was a, Dr. Doom was a guy who was a, a thoroughly respected academician. He was a highly, re, highly respected chemist mm -hmm. who happened to, but through a flaw in his own character, he was a perfectionist. Perfectionists cannot except imperfection. So what happens to Dr. Doom? Who wasn't even Dr. Doom at the time. Right, right. He was just a chemist. He gets a cut on his chin. Yeah. <laughs> See, the perfectionist mm -hmm. is, suddenly finds himself imperfect. Small as that scar may be. Right. Well, there was always that moment with him. And so he can't live with the rest of humanity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. He can't live with himself and the rest of humanity. He knows that every man and woman and child who passes him will know that he has this scar on his chin. <laughs> and so he encases his face in an iron mask. And I remember that moment because even though it's going to make his totally scar his face, the one scar in the whole face doesn't yes. make any difference to him Yes. At all. No, right. it doesn't make any difference to him. Right. Nobody is ever going to see that scar. <laughs> but they do. Mm -hmm. That scar grows so large that it affects his entire brain. Right. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. And Dr. Doom becomes the ultimate villain. Yeah. Yeah. He'll do anything to anybody. Why? Right. Because you <laughs> haven't got that scar. <laughs> <laughs> See? He has. Yeah. Yes. See? Yeah. 
And who do you think you are not having a cigar? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> you know. That's yeah. And that's the point of Dr. Doom. Uh, it's a totally human viewpoint. Mm -hmm. It's, um, a, what would you call it, an inferiority complex mm -hmm. to a guy who's superior. Right. right. Can you imagine how devastating that must be? <laughs> yeah, he views himself above, and he, but he can't escape. Right. Yeah. And here is a guy who is uh, the ultimate in brains, suddenly find himself on a level with the ordinary guy. Yeah. <laughs> Say the ordinary guy walks around, sure, I got my arm in a sling, so what? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Right. But if Dr. Doom had his arm in a sling, he'd hide the arm in a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now this, this brings up an, an, an Or he cut it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put a robot one out. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he, he, would do, he would do the ultimate thing. Right. See? Yeah. Uh, so he could face the world uh, as he believes he should. Mm -hmm. this, this brings up another um, thing. I was looking at your work, and I was talking with, some, with Randy and also with another friend of ours, and we were talking about the idea of scale. Yes. That you have, you know, you have Galactus, who's who's up above everybody, or yes. or the the Celestials, which is where the conversation of this whole thing yes. started. Yes. And uh, Galactus is a true god, mm -hmm. a god in the meaning of modern mythology, mm -hmm. uh, not not god in a spiritual sense. Right. But god. Uh, uh, but a, a god in a, in, a, uh, in a mythology that's very modern in context. Mm -hmm. See, uh -huh. It's a modern mythology. Yeah. In other words, what I'm taking is the old legends see, mm -hmm. and, and transforming them uh, into our contemporary lives. Sure. Well, the Celestials see, was amazing. So we can accept them. Yeah. And uh, Galactus, of course, is is the ultimate figure, see. And still, he has a human problem, too. He's got his son, Orion. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Or is it dark side? No, no dark, dark side. Yeah, but he has, he has yeah. the surfer, and he has that need to eat right. that he has. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, he, he deals with the silver surfer. And uh, uh, the silver surfer himself uh, was a... Uh, uh, was a wonderful surprise to me because I know nothing about surfing. <laughs> I know nothing about surfers. Yeah. And then one day I saw it in the paper. Yeah. There was a guy standing on a wooden plank out in California. <laughs> I was still in New York at the time. Right. Okay? And there's this guy standing on a wooden plank and he's he's riding the wave. Yeah. See? And that's fantastic to sure me. Is. And yeah. I said, suppose there was a surfer who surfed the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? And of course, the surfer does that. Right. And uh, he ha he also uh, he also has to have, uh, in my estimation, have a, a godlike appearance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And in being all silver, yeah. see, uh, that gives him the uh, aura, uh, the kind of aura that makes him different from ourselves. Sure. Yeah. There's a word that, the word keep, you keep using was cosmic. And yes. I wanted to ask you about that because I want to yes. know what your definition of the word cosmic is. My definition of, of of the word cosmic yeah. is everywhere. Uh -huh. Everywhere, mm -hmm. outside of Earth, mm -hmm. everywhere. we have everywhere. Yeah. They say there's nothing out there. I say there is. There is everything. There's more out, out there, there than there's here. <laughs> yeah. There is everything out there. Yeah. We haven't got the means or the right. money to reach it. See. Yeah. But it's out there. It was there was a, a science uh, program on physics that was talking yes. about how that even if you have an empty thing of space, a particle can come into existence and meet itself and disappear again. Yes. You know what I mean? They exist for that moment, and then they meet each other and go to zero. And that's what I always thought of. As, I thought that was that made me think of the word, the way you use right. the word cosmic. Now the Bible itself never mentions evolution. Uh -huh. See, mm -hmm. it's, it never says that man evolved over here mm -hmm. on Earth. Mm -hmm. It just says then there was man, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> God made man. See, and of course, man suddenly appeared, and there he was. I don't think man evolved from a monkey. A lot of people don't believe man evolved from a monkey. Mm -hmm. I believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. It says man was there, mm -hmm. woman was there. See, now we don't know how many civilizations there might have been on Earth before ours. Right. Nobody has any idea. I could go to the greatest mind in any college. Mm -hmm. I can go to any college professor, and he wouldn't even, he wouldn't be able to tell me mm -hmm. how many civilizations there were before ours. My guess is there might have been 30, 40, 100, and um, they, they might go back uh, 
hundreds of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. There might have been civilizations before ours. And I believe uh, man was present in all of them. Uh, man built them. Monkeys can't do it. <laughs> you, still, you still have well, armadillos can't. Do it. <laughs> you still, you okay. had, but you had the celestials come and, and uh, take the the apes creatures right and, and turn them into uh, in 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 uh, yes. The eternal. But the celestials can do it. The celestials can do it. Uh -huh. And the celestials look human, didn't they? Under yeah, you could yeah. see underneath. Yes. That was yeah. always amazing that you saw yes. that you would always in the yes. ancient they had, had that, they that had human, human aspect form. underneath those see, helmets. Yes, and stuff. underneath those helmets, underneath those helmets was a was a human being really. Mm. So a celestial human being. Uh, someone uh, uh, godlike uh, in our eyes, mm -hmm. because uh, of the things he could do that we couldn't. Right. But you'd always you'd always wrap them in this tech. Now, I mean, I always these, these double page spreads that you would do. Well, this I, technology I, that would you I tried to give it. I tried to give technology the touch of legend. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah that's the great. touch of legend. Yeah. And in doing so, I'm telling a story. Yeah. And I'm I'm not trying to tell a, uh, well, you know, a truth. Uh, or I'm not trying to tell a, a fable. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell a, an honest to goodness, honest to goodness, understandable story. Mm -hmm. A story that you would read and understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And interpret it in your own way. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to make him human, that's your prerogative. <laughs> See? Uh -huh. sure. That's your prerogative. And I respect that. Right. I, I res I've always respected my reader. <laughs> mm -hmm. See? My, my reader's most important to me. So... I would I would present a story as I felt it, I saw it, and say, how do you see it? See? That's right. That and, a lot, yeah, a lot right. of the the essays that you had in right. in, in your comics I, always I, probed I, the reader that right. way. Yeah. And I I uh, I never presented my story as the last word to mm -hmm. the reader. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I've always I have always said to myself, how would you see it? And of course, if the reader saw it differently, he has a right. He has a right to say that and show it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you that's know. why your stuff had so much influence on Yeah, well, I, it, it's because I respect other people. Yeah. Uh, I respect human beings. Uh, I've seen them in, in very happy circumstances, <laughs> and I've seen them in the dregs, believe me. Yeah. So uh, uh, I've always loved human beings because they have the capacity to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. And that's interesting. Yes, they do. And uh, I've... Uh, I try to make my characters human, whether we consider them evil or whether we consider them good. Mm -hmm. And uh, even my heroes mm -hmm. uh, had human qualities. Right. My superheroes had human qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have families to defend. They would have friends to defend. Uh, they would respect women. Uh, I respect women. <laughs> and uh, I felt I... Uh, I was preventing, uh, presenting my views to the reader and saying, what do you think? So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I think that's uh, uh, an imperative for any writer. In other words, mm -hmm. no writer should feel that he has the last word mm. on any subject. Right. Because he hasn't got the capacity. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. He hasn't got the capacity. He doesn't know. Right. See? Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. See? I'm guessing but as well as you are. Right. Except I may be a little more descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, That's and, all. And, there was, and you know, something, to, to, I want to ask this thing, because I, you know, I went through a lot of your of your work in preparing for this interview. Yes. And, stuff, and what I noticed is like there was a change from... You, you, you were working on those heroes at, at Marvel, and then you left for DC and you started with Commandi Command yes. Command and the New Gods, and there was a real change with some, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but there was something, you, you were creating more of a whole world and you were putting more issues into there, you know, yes. more um, concrete ideas into there yes. than you had been before. Yes, I was. And as you hit the 70s, it just seemed, I mean, really with the New Gods and the Eternals, you really seemed to be going for these ideas in a lot bigger way. Well, I did. I, uh, uh, I... I felt it was uh, incumbent on me uh, to probe them for myself mm -hmm. before I presented them to the reader. Mm -hmm. What do I think? Mm -hmm. What do I really think? And uh, 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 I'm not a I'm not a show off who's going to say, well, you know, 
uh, take it or leave it. That's when I, <laughs> you know, take my story or leave it. You yeah. know, I'm not that type. Uh -huh. See, I, I I can only say, uh, this is how I believe they would act, and uh, the reader. See, I uh, I I I put enough uh, of chinks into the story to uh, to allow the reader. To kind of fill to, in the gaps. A little yes, bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. to uh, interpret it his way. Right, right. See, because uh, I, I've always respected the reader. He's the next guy. <laughs> yeah. I've always respected <laughs> the next guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, it was a matter of selling magazines. Mm -hmm. And I, that was a big consideration. Oh, yeah. I, I had to sell magazines to make a living. Right. right. So, so I sold the magazines. I told the best stories that I could. But I, I didn't present my stories as the final word. I didn't say this is this isn't the final word. But that's how my characters act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And and that's all I said. Yeah. See, that that's how I see human beings. Right. See, and of course, you're entitled. You know, you're entitled to an, uh, to analyze my interpretation. Mm -hmm. As a reader, mm -hmm. yeah. that's and what, that's happening a lot. I mean, oh like yeah, people I would get letters, letters of you know all kinds. Uh -huh. How dare you, letters? You know? <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't even plan oh that yeah, <laughs> and I used to get your great letters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a great guy, you know, and I used to get you're a wonderful writer, you know, and uh, I used to get letters. Well, not bad, <laughs> 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 and. Uh, uh, it was a variety, and you could see it in the in the letter column that there was a variety of people who interpreted the stories in mm. a variety of ways. Mm. It impressed a lot of them. It impressed enough to make good sales. Yeah, yeah. See? yeah. And that's what I prayed for. Did you and do Did you do a lot of research for this stuff? Did you do? Uh, I uh, I did research. You see the as, as I was no as I was growing up. Uh -huh. uh, I I know people from the start. I love people. Uh, I grew up in a in a place where people suffered, uh, where people laughed, where people had a good time, and uh, uh, they it, it it was an extreme period mm. where uh, everything was uh, everything was felt in a in an almost bodily way. Mm -hmm. So Maybe we're going you, away you from could that be a bit well. Now. <laughs> you know, you couldn't be subtle. Yeah. In other words, uh, uh, in, in my neighborhood, you couldn't be subtle. Right. So uh, you either had a whack, or from your, uh, uh, from the you know uh, your own instincts, and we did. Mm. We did. If a guy insulted me, I punched him. See. And if I insulted him, he punched me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a reaction. It was a thing to do. Yeah. You couldn't do otherwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? There was nothing else you could do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the world doesn't seem to be quite that way. I mean, now it's. Oh, well, like it, now I, I think it, it's a lot more sensible. Uh, yeah. It's a lot more subtle. People uh, still find ways to get. I mean, even, even in your stories, you still have ways. People get at each other without having to hit each other. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Listen, now, you learn that along the way. Yeah. Um, I grew up uh, like everybody else. And. Uh, I felt that uh, uh, I was. I began. I, I felt that that I'd begun to tell stories in a more mature way. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, uh, there was not only fighting in them. I, ne I never left the fighting out. <laughs> well, right. but, but besides the fighting, I had to. I, I, I had the story develop, you know, uh, with more mature reason. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Why? Why was there a fight? You know, yeah. and I, I had to give a mature reason for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also, I also remember, um, I was reading in Omac. I loved the way you began it. You know, you would give a little hint of the future that you were concocting. There. Yes. You'd say, you know, in the world of the future, and then you had this presentation. And so this character Omac, he was the only fighter at that. I mean, he was Earth's defender really at that point, right? You Listen, change. let's face it. The future is a mystery. Right. Wouldn't you love to know it's in the future? <laughs> <laughs> And of course the reader would too. Sure. Right. And I'd say, uh, like you, you know, like you mentioned, 
in the future, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> and the reader says, in the future, you know. Tell me more. Gee, uh, well, what does this guy know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, of course, I presented as if I, I really knew, you know, <laughs> to, you know, to tell a good story. Mm -hmm. And that was to make the story believable. Uh, if, if, if you make, if you make your, uh, your characters, uh, knowledgeable in your own way. So make them share your own knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, then you'll have uh, humanized characters. You'll have characters who are human beings, just like yourself. Mm -hmm. You have foibles, right. you know, <laughs> you have great traits, you know, and uh, you have things that uh, uh, that will make it, you know, Candidates for vice president. <laughs> <laughs> that may not be so hard. Either. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> like my ambition was, I, I, I wanted to be a crooked politician. Because <laughs> uh, 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 coming from a deprived neighborhood, you know, money meant a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I, I felt that dirty politicians made a lot of it. Yeah. So uh, uh, I told my mother that I'd be a crooked pawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you rose and, to higher things. Yeah, yeah, she would have none of this. <laughs> <laughs> my mother would have none of it. Um, well, we'll give me a few here. see what other questions I wanted to ask you. Um, well, let, oh, I know what I want to talk about. You know what concept I love is the Unimind. Do you remember that from the Eternals? Which one the is it? The Unimind, when all the Eternals oh, join the together. Oh, the Unimind, yes. Because in, in I think, um, what was interesting about that to me is in computers now. Yes. Like Randy and I. Yes. We've never met before here. We've only met over the computer. We sat there and we and we had this environment that he and I right. met. Right. We, we met. You know, and that's just what the computer text. is. Right. Yeah. And the Unimind seemed to be a great um, symbol of that, of everybody coming together. And not only that, the, you, that computer will someday do it by itself. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. It'll someday do it by itself. Because it'll be on, uh, it'll be on some uh, in some automatic position. Right. Mm -hmm. We can leave it in an automatic position, mm -hmm. or it might go off by itself. Yeah. Because, I mean, figure it out. If a computer really thinks in its own mechanical way, suppose it really begins to think <laughs> mm -hmm. on its own. We're getting mm -hmm. close to it now. All right. Yeah, we so, couldn't that possibly happen? Sure. You walk out of the room. See? <laughs> you walk out of the room, and suddenly this thing goes off, yeah. and the entire room begins to click. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right? Like they, not only do they not only do they, yeah. do they, they want to do, they're trying and to. And you come back, and the room has changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there are four more lights. You know, <laughs> right. the computer lights more lights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you know, and uh, the soda you were drinking. And the computer likes the soda, <laughs> so he's made an opening where the soda is too, you know. Right. Because he, he, the computer has seen you do it. Mm -hmm, right. And the computer respects you because you've run them. Yeah. You made them. Yeah. See? Yeah. So, you know, you know what is, 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 is interesting is that you say, you know, I know yeah, that I'm very familiar with this technology. Yes. And even so, even probably I'm more familiar, you come out with very simple ways of, of discussing concepts that really are, that people are doing now. Like you say, people, that the computer watches what you do. And like, yes. the hottest thing in artificial intelligence now is you learn, from, the computer learns from the right. entry memory right. of the user. The computer really does learn. Yeah. yeah, it does. But, you know, where is the end point? Mm. <laughs> See? Yeah. Where is the end point? Mm -hmm. Suppose we make the perfect computer. The computer, for instance, I mean, we can talk into the computer, and it types everything out by itself. Mm -hmm. And the computer, in this manner, begins to think on its own. Mm -hmm. Suppose it doesn't like your speech. <laughs> yeah. And you come in, and you read this thing, and it's not the thing you gave the computer. Yeah. It's you happening, know? that happens now already. And you yeah, put the paper in, and you speak to the computer, and you type out, What's wrong with this? <laughs> and the computer types out, it stinks. <laughs> it happens now more than you know already. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah. See, I, I just haven't followed it. Yeah, but no, but you have a great, I mean, yeah, I, but I, I think you understand that all that. Yeah, of it is, is yeah I, I think there's a, dis there's a distinct possibility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how far does automation go? Right. See, do you view that as before, a threat? Do you see before you can walk out of the room mm -hmm. and this automaton begins to move and think by itself. Mm -hmm. Because it's built to think. Yeah. Right. 
Right. You, think it's good or, you think it's good or dangerous? Depends sure, on. it is dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's good sure. and it's dangerous, I guess. Suppose it closes the doors, it can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wants to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe it doesn't like you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, uh, what was I thinking of? You know, uh, oh, Mr. Machine. Yeah. Is, is that it's sort of the end result of that, right? Yes. He, he's a machine, yes. but he's suddenly he's suddenly gone so far that he's dealing with human problems again. He's a human, right? Again, right. Yeah. And Mr. Machine, of course, uh, is the ultimate machine. Uh, he's a human machine. Right. So. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, uh, that's what the machine wants to be. Uh -huh. You see, mm -hmm. yeah. like and Pinocchio almost in a way. Yeah. In a way. Well, I mean. The machine knows yeah. that we're responsible for it, right. that it wouldn't be there without us. Yeah. The machine knows that. So if, what, if it begins to think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where would I be if it wasn't for these guys? Yeah. <laughs> See? Let me I try to figure I, them out a little bit. Yeah, I want to be like these guys. <laughs> <laughs> these guys must know something. <laughs> and so uh, it's, it's not going gonna, it's not gonna to right. see it was a god, okay, See, because it knows that you can get a snipple, <laughs> see? And it knows that you can twist a finger, right. mm. see? The mm -hmm. machine knows that. So it says, these guys aren't perfect, see? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm more perfect than they are, <laughs> see? I'll show these guys something, I'll test them, right. see? Yeah. Yeah. And suppose the machine wins a test. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you have that kind of a contest. How far can you go at the computer before the computer begins to start on you? Yeah. See? Yeah. The computer has the possibility of thinking on its own. Sure. I mean, that possibility exists. Yeah, they, that's what people want them to do. Yeah, it's very <laughs> real. They're working yeah. for them to do that. Suppose, so a guy, suppose a guy walks out of his office and says to his computer, don't forget, I'll need 25 copies. <laughs> he says, before I get back at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's so funny you're saying yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the computer absorbs it. Yeah. I was just telling Randy, there's a new handheld gadget coming out now. Yeah. And you write on it, um, let's say I say, meet Jack Kirby Friday at noon. Okay. And it goes, it goes, it goes Jack Kirby puts it over there, it says Friday, this Friday, noon, 12 o'clock, and puts it in your date book. And all you've written on it is meet Jack Friday at noon. Yeah, you know? yeah. And <laughs> I say, I, you know, and uh, it's very possible for, for I, I think, you know, uh, I know it's far out, you know, but it isn't that far out. No, it's not. Considering, not considering the sophistication, you know, of the modern computer. Well, that's why I think people are coming back, like I said, the stuff you did 20 years ago, suddenly it's very current. Oh, sure. It is. It is. It's contemporary. Yeah. And of course, at that time, it was very, very far out. It was. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it really was. Yeah. And, uh, uh, if the fellows didn't like the stories, they could have kicked my behind. <laughs> <laughs> so that, but then you told a good oh, story sure. along with it. Yeah, oh, I had, uh, a, I had to sell them a good story. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I, that's what I mean. You have to be a good storyteller too. Yeah. You know. Keep people's interest. Yeah. Why is the machine doing that? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it is. Uh, maybe the machine is lonely. <laughs> so mm -hmm. maybe the machine wants to know what a man does that makes him smile. <laughs> the guy, the guy will sit at the machine. Suddenly he'll think of something. And he laughs out loud, or he smiles. And the machine says, why, why is he doing that? Mm -hmm. What's he thinking about that makes him smile? Right. I got to ask him that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask him that because he wants to find out. Yeah. Right. And suppose the, the computer starts talking. Like, right. I mean, yeah. reflex action. <laughs> it's got a brain. Yeah. yeah. OK? Maybe our brains came into existence because of mere reflex action. See, yeah. and uh, we were just creatures, you know, walking along, learning our way. I, I don't believe that we walk on all fours. We were guys just walking around, uh, trying to learn about our own existence, mm -hmm. which is what we're still doing today. Mm -hmm. And here, here we have these sophisticated machines who are just being born, see, and who are growing up. And suddenly, they begin to realize, you know, what do these, what do these guys know that I don't? You know, I got to ask them. <laughs> and suppose you type something on a machine that's very businesslike, and the machine types back, "Shit on that! <laughs> Tell me why you blew your nose." <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And the machine wants to know that. Yeah. Why does this guy take out a handkerchief 
and blow his nose in it. And you have to tell the machine, well, there's mucus in my nose. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. Then the machine begins to understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? And it says, where does this mucus come from? And then you say, well, it just gathers <laughs> from your body. <laughs> See? And it just comes out through your nose. And the machine says, gee, that's terribly exciting. <laughs> 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 and uh, the machine may try to build on its own something like that. Yeah. <laughs> because right. it thinks it's exciting. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, I think uh, that's the point we're at, where the we're building machines that are too damn sophisticated. Mm. They're too damn sophisticated. Mm -hmm. they're on, and they're on the brink of something that we know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's already happening, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Does it, I, mean, do you, I, mean, see, I, yeah. I mean, I go through, through periods where sometimes it frightens me and sometimes it inspires me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, suppose you come into the office and the machine begins to type. And it's, you know, on the typewritten sheet says, I expected you at 2.30. <laughs> you know. Well, where have you been? Yeah. yeah, where have you been? Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Well, so it's been my pleasure. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, you guys are wonderful. Oh, thank and you. I, I thank you for being, you know, for your kind interest. I, I, well, you know, I, I want to say thanks for everything you've done. I mean, you know, even as, I mean, I started reading your stuff when I was very young, and I mean, I'm writing science fiction and doing yeah. stuff now that was Well, you guys are on the brink of all that, then you can have a wonderful time with it. Yeah. Okay? Okay. All right. Take <laughs> care of yourself. Thanks a lot. Thank and you. stay healthy. Okay. <laughs>